have a ZF 6 HP 28 removed from a 2008 BMW 535D E61. The customer complaint for this box was um, it went into fail safe mode during kickdown under a high load moment. Um, the customer was able to scan the gearbox, get the fault code for me, and it came back as a 4F95, which is gear monitoring coupling BE implausible. So it picked up a gear slip code on either the E clutch or the B clutch. Um, straight off the bat, we stripped it down, inspected it before the video was recorded um, to get an idea of what was actually going on with the box. And we managed to find a couple of things that are obviously of concern. So, to start with, the B clutch has no faults with the clutch whatsoever. There's no hot spotting, no burnt out clutch packs or anything like that. The clutch packs are condition wise like new. Um, the same goes for the C clutch and the D clutch. Um, the E clutch, however, we did find a couple of bits and also on the A clutch, which the A clutch hasn't logged any fault codes whatsoever, but they are something to be aware of. Um, so, Basically, we'll start with the E clutch. Now, this very first disc, you can see the wear, this sort of grey section around the outside of the disc, and you can also see this dark red brown section just on the edge there. So, the darker section is actually heat ring, and this lighter grey section is because the E clutch is able to sort of float. So, as it is coupled together, it's basically it's the input shaft of the gearbox and this is the e-clutch output. They sit together like so, and it's able to flex like that, and it's not supposed to be able to, which is what's caused that ring of wear on that first disc. If we go through the clutch, and flip it over, there's not really any issue with the steel, top steel at all. Flip that one. You can ever so slightly see it, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there is some dark heat ring around that side of it. But the steel, absolutely fine. And as you go through the rest of it, it is absolutely okay. I mean, if you look there, you can see the original factory print from when the clutch was manufactured. So it was the same through the rest of the whole E-clutch. The rest of it was all right. It was mainly just that. So what I'll do, just to give you an idea as well, I'll put the input there and slot the output in the back. So obviously I've just shown you that flex, which it's not really supposed to be able to do. Um, it would be able to do it in ever so slight amount if all the bushings were in perfect condition, but this one clearly isn't. We've also got some side to side movement here, which just gives you an idea of the play in the bush. Put that to one side. This section here is the E clutch output. Um, the E clutch output will slot through the center and there's a bushing at this end and a bushing at this end. So if I just slot that through and hopefully be able to see or hear the movement side to side of the E clutch output with excessive play through the A clutch output. Also if I flip it this way, you might be able to see that movement just there. You can definitely hear it. So the bushings at both ends of this do have excessive movement. All in all, that's allowing the whole assembly just to flex. Possibly that could be what has led to a gear slip moment. That top clutch that I just pointed out on the E, that wouldn't give it the slip on its own. But it is an issue that just needs to be rectified. But the movement might have been able to cause one of the clutch drums, which sit inside these drums. They're basically like pistons. Uh, it might have been able to allow that to move to one side when it's trying to compress on the clutch and pass a little bit of fluid. It's just not engaging the way that it should do. The A clutch, like I say, this didn't log any fault codes whatsoever. Um, that's still ever so slight heat spot, just there. I'm not sure exactly what would have caused it other than, like I say, play with the bushings. And if you look at that first one, once again, you can see the heat ring just around the edge. It's not excessively worn, because there's the original print from the factory, but it has managed to generate a little bit of excessive heat and you can see on the same on the other side as well. But once again, as you go through the heat spot there on that disc, and then there's a slight one there, 
as you go through any form of heat build up just gets less and less so there's hardly anything on that one at all nothing on the next steel and the same through the rest of them as you can see once again the print there so they're not excessively worn it's just generated a bit of heat in these top clutches so that's something else that will have to be sorted out um, the main issues with this box is the bushings from what we've found for instance if I'd grab the oil pump and just slot it there this is the a clutch drum with the piston built in the center you've got a bushing just here and a bushing just here and these mate up to the back of the pump so if I slot that in place there's a very very small amount of movement it's quite hard to show to be fair possibly if we come around to this bit here you might be able to see it It is quite difficult to show on the video, to be totally honest. But once again, those bushings will have to be replaced. The full set of bushings through the whole box will be replaced, along with all the clutch drums being stripped down, seals rebuilt, seals on the input shaft being rebuilt. We just grab the B clutch. Now, if you remember me saying the E clutch slots through the centre of the A clutch output, a clutch output slots through the centre of the B clutch. If I go on that one, there's hardly any play in this at all, just to give you an idea. You can't hear anything. I can feel the slightest bit of movement, but to be fair, even if I was to build this up from fresh, I would expect the tiniest, tiniest bit of movement. And even at the bottom, at the other end, there's absolutely nothing. So it spins nice and freely, there's no issues at all. about it really like I say all the clutch drums will get stripped all the seals will get replaced regardless of the fact that the C the D the B have actually got any issue with the clutches or anything like that to negate any further issues with maybe a fluid pass on a clutch drum then we will strip that down replace all the seals and all the pistons um, along with that you also get your new fluid your new sump you get new mechatronic seals which run around the back of the box and the bridge seal which sits here as the mechatronic unit goes on. Um, the box is commonly found in the 3 series, um, like the 335D particularly, uh, 330Ds as well. It can also be found in the 7 series and the X5. Um, they all tend to suffer with this similar sort of issue. They can log different fault codes, you can get a 4F85 which is specifically targeted at the E-clutch or you can get a 4F8A which is also to do with the E-clutch but also normally tends to crop up when it's more of a fluid pressure issue inside a clutch drum or something rather than a burnt out clutch. So 4F85 can come up for that reason or it can come up for the clutch actually being burnt out and just generally slipping. I've seen them to the point where they're burnt down to the metal and there's nothing left. You get a lot of heat build up on the drum and it starts to warp the drum and it's you just end up replacing the lot. So I mean this has had a very minor bit of heat, you can see the rainbow effect but there's nothing to be concerned with at all on that. So, so there was one last thing that I forgot to show in the original recording of this video, and that was to do with the bushings inside the central housing that support the B clutch drum. So, just grab the B clutch. As you can see, I've already rested the central housing here, and we'll slot it through the center. Now, if I give that a wobble, you can definitely see that movement there. Um, it's possibly why it might have picked up the 4F95, because maybe it also picked up a slip on this clutch. It might have done it on multiple at the same time, which is why it's not too sure, and it gives that fault code just to try and direct you into it. But there's definitely some movement there, allowing the B clutch to flow around in the central housing. So I just thought I'd show that as well. Um, as I was saying previously, all the bushings get changed anyway, the whole lot. Uh, one thing that I won't be showing in the video is the equal chart at the very end of it will actually slot into the output flange on the box. There's a bushing in the back of there, I've still got to remove all that. Um, but that bushing's also got some excessive weight, just also allowing the e clutch output to float around and just not holding the whole e clutch assembly as it should be. So I just thought I'd point that out as well. Um, and that's about it. So yeah, thanks for watching.